in any war fought by any Muslim. Jihad basically means to strive to struggle. The Hindus and the Muslims will be united. He is not cosmic energy, he is more superior than that. Quran gives you the solution to the problems of humankind. Not that we shall despise each other. That according to Japan, India will be the superpower of the world. We will be a superpower, we will be far superior to the Americans. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah wa ala wa sahibi ajmain. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman r-Rahim. Roman Ahasanu kawla mimman dhu'i lallahi. Wa amilu salihahum. Wa kawla innan min muslimin. Rabbi shali sadri. Wa silli amri. Wa halul ugdata min lisani yahkahu kawli. You're more welcome to ask any questions on Islam and compassion religion or any question which a non-Muslim may have posed you and you are unable to reply. Is there any question the most welcome, brothers and sisters? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. You said, when we Muslims again will come closer to the Quran and Hadith and Sunnah, our life will match with the life of the Prophet Muhammad and Sahaba Akram, again we will start making the discoveries and inventions. One of the non-Muslims, it's true that you are not true Muslims, but you are closer to the Quran and Hadith, and your life somewhat matches with the life of the Prophet and Sahaba Akram. But today you are nowhere, you are hammered like anything. You see us, we are away and away from the Quran and Hadith. And we are making the miracle. How to convince him? Well, I pose the question that when last time when I said that Muslim land making discoveries and we are in the firing line because we are away from Quran and Sunnah. So he's saying that the non Muslims reply that even though you are not 100% in line with Quran and Sunnah, at least you are closer than the non Muslims. But yet you see around the world that the non Muslims making discoveries, we are ahead, we are enjoying life, and you are in the firing line. So what reply do you have? The first point we noted, brother, that we as Muslims, we believe that this life is a test for the hereafter. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah zi khalaq al wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of his good and deeds. This life is a test for the hereafter. So our main aim, our main goal is the Akhirah. It is like someone telling me that there are two students in the classroom. One is very intelligent, very studious, and the other is a person who plays hooky, and he comes last in the class. And he tells the intelligent person and the studious person that, see, I'm enjoying life. I'm seeing movies every day. I'm not studying. You're studying, you're slogging, and you're staying awake in the night. See, I'm enjoying life. I'm going for movies, I'm going to five-star hotels, and I don't study at all. Who's better? But then we realize that the person who is studious and intelligent, his main aim is to pass the examination. So for that small student, just before the examination, it may appear that the person who is studying, who plays hooky, who misses school, who goes for movies, and he goes for dance parties and does not study, comes out of class, may appear to be the person who is enjoying life more. But in the long run, if we analyze, because we human beings are intelligent, we live for approximately on average 50 years, some 60 years, some 70, some 40 years, some 30 years. We realize that in the long run, it is preferable to be studious and maybe undergo certain pressures, certain problems, etc. And after the examination, we benefit. We make a doctor's degree, it may benefit us. So similarly, we as Muslims, our main aim in this world is a test for the hereafter. Our main goal is the akhirah which is Jannah and Jannam. So in this test, the test that we are undergoing you know, for one year, it is for average 50 years. Some people live for 30 years, some 40, some 50, some 60, some 70, some 80, some 90. On average, about 50 to 60 years is a human life. So if you analyze and say that we are enjoying life and we have more discoveries, and if you see the Muslims are being targeted, so it is a short-sightedness according to me. A main name is Akhira. So if you analyze many things that we do, Many things that the Quran has prescribed. Maybe others are following. But logically, you can't prove that it is good for this world. For example, if I ask you, that is robbing good or bad? And the normal reply get is robbing is bad. Logically, no one can prove robbing is bad. Unless he speaks about Akhira. If I rob, I may get 1,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees. After I rob, I can see a movie, I can go five out, I can enjoy life. You cannot do it as bad. It's good for the person who's robbing. Person who's being robbed, it may be bad. So logically, you cannot prove robbing is bad. 
I have given the talk on concept of peace. I have discussed in detail that logically you cannot prove robbing is bad except you believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and along with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you also have to believe in Akhira. Well, if you go scot free here, there are many rapists, there are many people who kill many people, and they enjoy this life. So the only way we can prove them is wrong that in the Akhira they'll be punished. So similarly, as far as Muslims are concerned, our main goal is Akhira. Fine, but if we are on the Quran and Sunnah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasnatam wa fil akhirati hasnatam kin azab bin nar. That, oh my Lord, give us the good in this world and the hereafter. But our main aim is Akhira. If we can have both, the good of both the world, alhamdulillah. But the good is according to what we feel is good, as laid down guidance in the Quran and the Sunnah. So whatever troubles we see that's happening in the world today, our main aim is that we should follow the guidance of our Creator. So if we are short-sighted, you may agree that Muslims are being targeted, we are being harassed, but if a person is a namesake Muslim, and if he is not following the Quran and Sunnah, just by having a Muslim name, Muhammad, Abdullah, Zakir, Sultan, will not take him to Jannah. To go to Jannah, we require four things. As is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, Wal Asr, Inna al insana fi khusr, is in Amunu, wa amil salihati, wa tawasaw bil haqqa, wa tawasaw bil sabr. That by the token of time, man is very in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deeds, those who exhort people to patient perseverance, and those who exhort people to the truth. So many four criteria are required for going to Jannah. First is the Shrav Iman. Second is righteous deeds. Third is inviting people to the truth, that is Dawah and Islam. And fourth is inviting people to patience and perseverance. If anyone is missing, under normal circumstances, we shall not enter Jannah. My earlier answer was mainly correlated with science and technology. That even today, if we do research on the Quran, there are many things which are mentioned in the Quran which science hasn't discovered. So if we go back to the Quran and do research, like how people did in the past, again, we'll be advanced in the field of science and technology. As far as living the lifestyles today in this world, our main aim is not to hoard wealth. Our main aim is not to be extravagant in this world. The main aim is to follow the guidance, be kind, be truthful, should not harm anyone, should not kill any innocent human being. If we follow all these guidance mentioned in the Quran, then inshallah, in the hereafter, we'll be successful. So we are not trying to prove that we are living a good life in this world. Inshallah, we can. Because many people who come out first, if you analyze, they slog out a lot, majority of them. There may be few who may not be toiling so much, they may come out first. So if we tell that the person who comes out first in the medical examination, or 12 standard, he studies for 15 hours a day, or 13 hours a day, he's toiling, he's struggling. The same way the Quran says that we have to strive and struggle in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To see to it, fulfill his commandments, and inshallah, the hereafter will be successful. Hope that answers the question. Explore the options, match the qualities, assure the success. What happens at school, or more specifically, what happens inside the classroom? The classroom. The classroom. Good qualities of classrooms, interactive, challenging, collaborative. Distributive focus, student-centered. Let's together examine the quality of education that is provided to our children. To use this quality precisely, join me on Peace TV. Join Dr. Mandu Muhammad in Teaching at School tomorrow, 5 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 6 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce. What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem. Join family system. Heaven or hell. Big You choose. Beauty. Wealth. Family status. Virtue. Decide what you want. Your choice. Be sad or be happy. 
It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Sunday at 7 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 8 p.m. UAE. Peace TV. Analyze your mistakes. Have you ever tried to overcome your anger? Realize your weakness. Do you find it difficult to control your tongue? Diagnose your moral sickness. Have you ever felt that your intentions are corrupt? Learn the steps essential to nourish our souls in purification of the soul. Every Friday at 4 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 5 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Why adopt a Muslim character? I'm your host, Yusuf Estes. Why follow the prophetic way? We're going to be talking about some of the most important things about Islam today. Why worship none but Allah? Is Islam essential to uproot existing evils from the world? What it's all about, why we're here, so much more. To get answers to your queries, watch Tell Us About Islam next on Peace TV. Any brother has any questions? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, my question is regarding Hajj. Can a person who has not yet performed Hajj do hajj e badal or not? What is hajj e badal? And the second question is posed by a non-Muslim regarding the rituals in the Hajj. When we throw stones, what is the relevance of that? And does in any way Shaitan get affected by those stones or not? I mean, this was one of the things. And in that act, there are lots of people who die. I mean, what is the answer to that as well as the part but of that the was a question that a person who has not performed Hajj and Hajj is Fard, can he do Hajj e Badal? First question. Second question is that when we stone the Jamrat, does the Satan, does the devil get hurt and don't people get killed? So what's the reason? As far as the first question is concerned, that can a person who has not done Hajj do Hajj e Badal? No, he cannot do. Hajj e Badal means doing Hajj on behalf of somebody else. Maybe the person is alive, he may be sick, he physically cannot perform all the rituals of Hajj. So surely he can say that here I'm giving you money. Just because I'm physically not fit, I am asking somebody else to. As far as second part of the question is concerned, that when we stone the Jamurat, does the devil get hurt? See, here we have to realize that when we stone the Jamurat, it is not that physically we are causing a damage to the Satan. It is symbolic. That means we are against the devil. That is there. And we know that the devil always strives to take us on the wrong path. So when we are stoning the Jamal, we are actually symbolically agreeing that we are against the devil and we won't fight against him because he's an award enemy to us. As far as the last part is concerned, that while stoning the Jamal, many people die, etc. That's the reason the government is making facilities. The government is giving more facilities where people can stone and yet there may not be a stampede, etc. But if you analyze, brother, previously when people used to go for Hajj, maybe 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back, more people used to die as compared to today. Today, about 2.5 million perform Hajj every year, on average. 2.5 million people perform Hajj every year. Previously, it was less than a million. If you go back more, it was less than 100,000 people. Yet, when we went for Hajj, suppose living in India, we had to go by ship. It would take months to do Hajj. Now, you can go for Hajj and come back even in six days' time. Minimum even less than that. On average, they take two weeks to three weeks. So that want to go to Medina, etc. And stay in Makkah for a longer period. But the minimum requirement can be done in a few days. Previously, it would take months. And whenever people used to go for Hajj, they used to meet the relatives. And there was an understanding, maybe we will not return back. Maybe. Chances. Not that they won't return for sure, but chances are there. Whether 20% back, 30% or 40%, whatever it is. But now if we analyze the 2.5 million people going and the total number of people dying for whatever reason, it is 0.001%. It will be less than 0.01%. So compared to before, now the facilities are much better. 
as far as the toilets are there, mashallah, very hygienic compared to before. But now, we don't want even a single person to die. So if one person also dies for any reason because of overcrowding or stoning the Jamrat, the government of Saudi Arabia is trying its best to curtail it down. And when non-Muslim experts, when they hear about the facility that the government is giving, they say it is impossible. Logically and scientifically, it's impossible that two and a half million people are gathering together in Arafat, Mina, and performing the rituals without hundreds of thousands of people. They say it's impossible. Yet, Alhamdulillah, we see that every year the Hajj is being performed. There have been occasions where there was some fire took place and few hundred people expired. There was a tunnel that caved in. But yet, if we see the percentage, it is very negligible. So even in Jamrat, now the government has made a flyover and I've extended the Jamrat so that we can stone from the ground floor as well as first level. Now a second level has come and more will keep on coming. So they're trying the level best and see to it that people come and do what is required in the religion without being hurt. And when people go for Hajj, there they see millions of people gathered together, people dressed up in two pieces of unsewn cloth, preferably white. There we see the real brotherhood. People from America, Canada, UK, Singapore, Malaysia, India, Pakistan, UAE, Gulf countries, they dressed up in two pieces of unsewn white cloth, preferably. You cannot identify the person standing next to you as a king or a pauper, whether rich or poor, all look similar. So here we get the universal brotherhood and practically demonstrate. So we perform Hajj because it's one of the pillars of Islam. It's part of the commandment of Allah and the soul. Hope that answers the question. Any brother have any questions? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as uh, We just now heard that Allah says in Quran that night is uh, there for rest. Uh, how about those people who work in nights? Are they violating the law? Well, the question that the Quran has said that night has been made for you for rest. So those people who work at night, are they violating the rule? See, there are exceptions to those. As a general rule for the whole world, the day is the time for working, night is for rest. But there are exceptions to the rule. Like, if we analyze, the many things which are made as a general rule, which is there. For example, there are a small minority who are left-handed because the right lobe is dominant. If your brain, the right half is dominant, then you become a lefty. Normally, most of the human being in the left hemisphere is dominant, so you become a righty. But in certain situations, where there are exception to the rule, where you are made physiologically that way. So similarly, as far as the general rule is concerned, the time for working is day, and the time for resting is night. But as a general rule, as a majority, maybe more than 90%, the night is meant for rest. But those people who work in night, then day should be rest for them. For example, it is said that offering salah, salah is for the jamaat. But when you had war, one of the jamaat offers salah, and the other people is staying at guard, then the next jamaat. But the thing is, earlier the better. So the person offering jamaat first is better than the second. But in this situation, both get equal sawab. Because the first jamaat is supervising and checking and holding for during war, so if everyone says we'll offer first jamaat, then there'll be a problem. Similarly, in haram, if he's in haram, there are priests who don't join the jamaat. These people are taking care of law and order. If they say, no, we want to get sawab in the jamaat, and we will not miss the jamaat, physically, by the hadith, yes, you should offer earlier. So they miss the jamaat of the haram. So inshallah, I feel they're doing it so that everyone can offer jamaat. Suppose there are one million people in haram, doing Ramadan, or one and a half million people. Because these police, who may be few in hundred in numbers, because of them, people can easily offer salah. So they offer afterwards. But if you ask me, inshallah, inshallah, because of them, the one million people can offer salah. So that's the reason they will get equal salah. Unless intentionally they're not offering salah, if the niya is there, that they should offer. So in this situation, when there are certain jobs required, for example, the police. Police work day and night, night shift and day shift. They said, no, why? Night is for rest. So in a Muslim country also, there are police working at night time. They cannot say, no, night is for rest, therefore I will sleep. So the law and order will be disrupted in the country. So these exceptions to the rule, so what the Quran is saying is a general rule. But there are exceptions to the rule. So there may be a small percentage, that be 5% or 10%, who may work at night. Same in our office. When we do work, when we're doing on the clock, 
certain work has to be done. So there are some people who come in night shift. So in these situations, an exception is there. But as a general rule, night is for rest and day is for working. In these cases, the night the person works and day rests. Hope that answers the question. Any brother have any questions on Islam and comparative religion? Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We heard that unless we do the da'wah, we will not enter Jannah. And again, you emphasize on Surya Asr, where four criteria are met, we will not enter Jannah. Okay, that is fine. But then there is another hadith which says, even if you believe that Iman, equivalent to a mole, you will enter Jannah. Don't think this conflict with each other. The question that da'wah is part of the four criteria, Iman, righteous deeds, da'wah, exhort people to truth and perseverance. But the hadith which says that even if you have one atom of Iman, you should enter Jannah. So here we realize that whenever we pick up a hadith, you can't pick up the hadith in isolation. The Quran, if you analyze, you have to analyze the Quran as a whole. For example, one verse in the Quran says that alcohol is prohibited. In the other place it says pork is prohibited. So if you read as a whole, both are prohibited. They may be one place is zakat and salah is fard. Other places hajj if you can do is fard. So that doesn't mean you pick up one and think that is only sufficient. As far as the Quran is concerned, if you take in context of the verse, the verse by itself, Alhamdulillah, will always be true. As far as the hadiths are concerned, we have to take all the hadith together. We can't pick up one hadith in isolation. For example, it is said, that if anyone who abides two daughters, Abdullah Prophet said, that anyone who abides two daughters properly, till they become adults, with love and affection, they shall enter Jannah. Now here it's not mentioned about Iman and righteous deeds and everything else. It is understood that if you do the faraiz, this one act is sufficient to tell the balance. That means, if you do the acts. See, for example, we know that there are certain times that if we play sports in the 11th and 12th, we get five marks bonus. If you play cricket, five marks bonus, volleyball, Mark bonus, etc., etc., etc. You can't add up all these bonuses and say that I will get all the bonus and get admission to medical college. And again, limitation is there. Only one bonus is counted, maximum five marks. But that also it takes place when you reach a certain level. If you fail, if you get 30 marks, you can't say put this five marks. I'll get 35 and pass. They don't allow you that. So this is only comes into action when you reach a certain level. These additional marks help you, not at the lower level. Similarly, all these hadiths that normally all these hadiths is talking about Jannah, etc., and about punishment, it is taken into consideration that you do the faraiz. It doesn't mean that I bring up two daughters. So then a person who does idol worship will also say that I will upbring two daughters. Hadith says anyone who upbrings two daughters properly till they mature, they'll be as close to me on the day of judgment as this. That means they go to Jannah. That means the person can do idol worship, he can rape, he can rob. And a brief two daughters with love and a family go to Jannah? No. It is a general rule that after fulfilling all the faraiz, this one act is sufficient. Similarly, talking about Iman. That if Allah wants, if you read the Quran, it's mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 48, and Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 116. If Allah pleases, He can forgive any sin. But the sin of Shirk will never forgive. Any other sin, if He pleases, He can forgive. If Allah wants to forgive, he can forgive. That doesn't mean that you keep doing sin. But shirk is sin you can forgive. If you die as a shirk, if you die worshipping somebody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you shall never be forgiven. This is the biggest sin. So here we realize that Iman is contrary to shirk. If you have Iman, you'll never do shirk. So it means that if you have Iman, and if Allah wants to forgive you, all the other sins, he may forgive you. So Iman is important, not doing shirk is the most important, opposite of that is Iman and Tawheed. And Iman the best, highest is Tawheed. So Tawheed is most important. And if you have Iman, but naturally you will have righteous deeds also. If you have totally Iman, 100%, enter into Islam wholeheartedly. Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 2 and 8. So if you have Iman, if you have faith, you will have to follow, you will have to submit. Means you have faith, then you have righteous deeds. You may have part iman, then you may submit partly or not. That's different. So the hadith here says that Allah will take care of even the smallest atoms iman. If you have, you'll go to jannah. Meaning that if you fulfill the basic requirements, this atom is sufficient to put you to jannah. That doesn't mean that 
I will only be man I believe in Allah, then I rob, I rape, I do all sorts of nonsense, have righteous deeds, kill people, etc. You go to Jannah, no. It doesn't mean that at all. So people have, when they pick up certain hadiths, they quote out of context. And the hadiths are the general after fulfilling all the farais, then inshallah. Hope that answers the question. Wa'akhirat da'wan, Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbu, innaka anta salam, minka salam, ilayka salam. Ya Rabbu, innaka anta salam, minka salam, ilayka salam, li amma. يرجع أمر الأنام بين يديك قلوب الأنام لأمرك يرجع أمر الأنام بين يديك قلوب الأنام Islam, the true religion Islam is the deen of Allah جل وعلا growing religion in the world. The system, the way of love that Allah Dalla revealed to mankind created confusions. We need to understand how to deal with these different views. Imposing ideologies. Once you understand the systematic approach to understand Al-Islam, then you would be able to articulate any view regarding Al-Islam. Watch Hatam Al-Haddad. Explain the right way to understand Islam. We know that Islam is the truth, but we are unable to convey this truth for others. Principles of Understanding Islam. Tomorrow at 11.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 12.30 a.m. UAE on Peace TV. Faith. Focus on the foundation because the foundation makes us the Muslim, a stronger Muslim, Muslim. coming coming Firmness. You must love Allah. You must love Prophet Muhammad And five pillars. Declaration of faith. Follow up with the Salah, Zakat, and Saum Ramadan al Mubarak. Performing Hajj. Hussein Yee. The basic foundation of our deen, completely way of.